toxic as hell. <laughs> Like super toxic. There's no way I would like to have a love story like theirs. Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I want to talk about the movie Love Jones. Okay, so I may be the only person out there my age that has never well I had never previously seen the movie Love Jones until the other night <laughs> I know a lot of people have like seen that movie but I for one have never seen it and I actually own like a DVD double feature pack thing where it has my favorite movie A Thin Line Between Love and Hate go check out my review on that movie if you haven't seen it already but on the other side of it it has the movie Love Jones and I just disregarded that DVD completely I don't I never watched the movie never had an interest in doing it <laughs> but anyway so the other night I was flipping through Netflix I was trying to find something to watch and I saw Love Jones so I was like okay let me go ahead and give it a shot because it has two of my favorite actors starring in the movie which is Nia Long and Lorenz Tate so I said, all right, I'm going to finally sit down and watch it and see what all the hype is about. I watched the film and I said, okay, I know people have been saying, oh, I want to love like Nina and Darius on Love Jones. Oh, I love the movie Love Jones. I'm like, this movie is toxic as hell. <laughs> toxic there's no way I would like to have a love story like theirs oh my gosh and your girl Nina is so problematic so by now I'm assuming that everybody has watched the movie Love Jones other than me so I ain't gonna go into the whole different plot but long story short it's a movie about two artistic individuals Nina who's a photographer and Darius who's a poet he's a writer and them falling in love it's supposed to be their love story you know a young black couple that's you know artistic and deep you know that type of thing so I was expecting the movie to have some type of depth I didn't get any depth from it it was just totally toxic Nina nobody told me that Nina was homeless the movie and stuff because I've seen clips and stuff of the movie of course throughout the years and stuff I never watched the movie in its entirety so I was watching the movie and I was like oh this nice penthouse or whatever that she's staying in she house sitting ain't she because at the beginning of the movie she was getting out of a relationship and everything with the guy who had proposed to her and I guess once they broke up she was homeless you know what I'm saying and then she was house sitting for somebody so that nice house that she was staying in she was homeless and then she was unemployed because she got fired at the beginning because she couldn't get the man's breakfast order of uh, right she wasn't following directions and had an attitude so he was like you know what you probably better off doing your own thing so she was job and homeless for most of the movie <laughs> nobody mentioned that to me oh girl y'all left that out this is a very important fact you know but after a very serious relationship you know she gets out of the relationship with her ex fiance and stuff you know it's only right that she go with her girl out to the club well she chose to go to a little poetry slam which is cool you know and that's where she um bumps into Darius and she goes up to the bar or whatever and she giving him the eye and stuff and so, um, so what do you think about what's on your mind and stuff like she knew what she was doing she was flirting with old boy you know what I'm saying I, I see ain't nothing wrong with that ain't nothing wrong with trying to get over a man by trying to get under another one you know that's what she was doing you know what I'm saying so she's playing hard to get and you know I think men like the art of the chase but you gotta be real at certain points too you know what I'm saying but you know your girl was just real toxic and she, she just wasn't keeping it real with herself or with Darius and that's where the majority of their problems resided now you know not don't let me place all the blame with her cuz you know Darius was a strange fellow too because you know he just beats this lady and then he goes up there and he's giving out his poem he's doing his he's performing his poetry for everybody and he talked about 
doing shebang bang and stuff with her and stuff you know but he's saying it in you know a, a very eloquent way you know some sort of rhythm and blues and stuff talking about getting between her thighs we know what he was trying to do I'm like you don't know this lady you will dedicate this poem to her but you know it was slick and she, she might she must have been with it the way she came up to the bar you know what's on your mind he telling you exactly what's on his mind Shook. <laughs> You know, afterwards when she walked up on him and the homies and stuff, you know, that was real cool. Because I ain't gonna lie. If I was her and I were to see him with a group of guys and one girl, I would assume that the girl was with one of the other guys. You know, as far as being in a relationship, I wouldn't have assumed that she was just a friend. You know what I'm saying? But that's what happens when you secure with yourself. Because Nana, she knew that she had it going on. You know what I'm saying? She knew she was beautiful. So she ain't mind. She stepped to him. You know what I'm saying? Again, with the whole cat, cat and mouse thing. You know, she should have gave him digits. Because it wasn't like she wasn't interested. She was just lying to herself the whole time. It was instant chemistry. It was an instant connection. To, you know between the two of them so why did she just give him the number instead of writing love on his hand so yeah i could write a poem about you too but you know there's other things to talk about other than sex and he's like well what is that she writes on his hand love girl ain't nobody got time y'all grown y'all grown y'all want to hit the skins hit the skins and that's another thing <laughs> I guess it was just by this whole twist of fate that they just end up at the record store and they bump into each other again and stuff and you know he's putting it on he's being smooth playing a little record floor and everything and she you know she liked it she had to act like you know she was playing hard to get like nah i don't want to give you my number and stuff like why go through all that trouble when you know that the man is fine and that you're attracted to him what's wrong with giving him the number you know what i'm saying but he was extra creepy and it was illegal for him to get her address from that check and then just show up at the door i would have peeked out the peephole like who is this now all attraction would have just been gone after that i don't care how far you are don't just be popping up at my house in my crib after i done blew you off you just showing up and i ain't getting an address i would have been calling 911. Someone please call 911. Yes, I sure would have. That's some stalker behavior. You know what I'm saying? She a single woman living by herself. He just pop up. Man, crazy. But yeah, she she knows she was with it. Then they go out on the first date and stuff. And you know, they had that passionate kiss. You know what I'm saying? Tongue all down the throat. I said, oh no. Oh no. You don't just be kissing people all willy nilly like that. Y'all be kissing people like that that I don't know. Uh-uh. I gotta know you for like a while a long while before i let you put your tongue in my mouth <laughs> she was tripping tripping and they had dare to say i don't want you to get the wrong impression like oh, i don't want you to come in you know what i'm saying like i don't want to do it on the first date you know what i'm saying like girl back <laughs> you know what it was and stuff. And he's like oh he trying to weasel himself in trying to figure out something to say you know so he could go up in there like if you just want to do the do just do the do you know what i'm saying they they did what they had to do she had that man up in there the next morning cooking her some omelets she put it down she put it down 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 i said that's my girl you did what you had to do thumbs up to you girl but you know, why we always trying to play, downplay a romance to our friends and stuff like it's not nothing serious. We just friends, friends that hit the skid. So we just friends with benefits, but it's no love connection there. You know what I'm saying? It, no feelings involved, just private parts. You know what I'm saying? We just bump at uglies, but no, no feelings involved. It's not, it's not a love thing. Who are you fooling? <laughs> I just could be smashing and dashing and not catch no feelings. It's kind of hard for us to just be shaboing, boing, boing, and then not have no feelings involved. You know what I'm saying? But I think it was just the thrill of it. Her just feeling like she was in charge. So her ex fiance comes up in the picture. This is where the further games come into play. Like this man done dropped you to the side. You know what I'm saying? Left you like a hot potato. Done went on about his life and everything. 
and he just thinks he could just come back and just have it so easy after everything your child done been through and you supposed to be upset now that's somebody that you should have got some get back on you know what i'm saying and then you you contemplate like maybe i should go to new york and try to work things out with him and try to see where this goes and stuff but i, I going back to no messed up situation after I'm getting the goods you know what I'm saying to explore something new with somebody else you know what I'm saying and then she gonna sit there and get some freaking advice from a homegirl that don't got no man and he had no man that's sitting up there listening to her and her sexual escapades and getting a rise out of it you, that's not the type of, that's not the person that you go to for relationship advice like what should I do what should I do about Darius should I stay here with him should I let him know that my ex came and and should I let them know that I'm thinking about going to New York? What you be asking your homegirl for? And then go take her dumb advice. Tell them some, yeah, tell them um, that you're leaving. And if he gets upset and he makes a scene, then yeah, you know, he's the one you should stick with him or whatever. And he act, if he acts like he don't care, then just go ahead or whatever and leave. Who got time for the madness? And then, of course, she breaks the news to him. But when she's telling him... Now she's going off to New York. She's beating around the bush. Like, oh, I got some contacts. I might have a job here. Then, you know, might link up with somebody that I knew. And he's like, oh, so you mean like an old flame or something? You know, keep it keep it funky with dude. All you had to say was, yo, my ex-fiance, he thinking about working things out. And I'm not really sure what I want to do right now. And so I was thinking that maybe I could go back and see where that leads. You know what I'm saying? Like, just keep it funky if y'all just hitting the skins. And she expect this man to just blow up and be like, no, I want you to stay with me. No, he, he should have did what he did, which was play it cool. Because that's what y'all was supposed to be. Y'all were just supposed to be friends with benefits, right? So how can you be in your feelings when he's like, oh, okay, all right, yeah, that's cool. That's what you asked for. He doing what you asked him to do, girl. In all honesty, I just think that there is, he was just thrown off by the whole experience and he never expected to really fall for a woman like he did with Nina. Even though I, I feel like she got him to fall for her in kind of like a sneaky type of way. Because she won't really keep it 100 with him. He kind of had his, his heart on his sleeve with her. But she wanted to play games. You know what I'm saying? And so, he, he I think he really did want to get some type of advice from his friends. And especially his married friend. Even though, you know, things won't tick top in his marriage because he parading the female around the friends and stuff after him and his wife split up but i was looking at darius and the friends like okay why are you looking at the married man like something wrong with him with bringing a female friend around when y'all have a female friend in y'all circle you know what i'm saying so maybe his wife will be okay with him having a female friend because she ain't saying nothing about she little being friends with um him and hanging out with y'all showing up at her house and eating her carrots so maybe she would be okay with him having a friend that he works with you know when it comes to married people you need to mind your business you, if you ain't never been in a marriage don't judge nobody's marriage but i digress i'm getting a little off topic but yeah so dad's trying to get advice sound advice from the married man which you know is it, good you know he's telling him that you know you got a love jones thing going on and i looked up the definition of love jones and love jones is like an addict like a crack addict <laughs> or a heroin addict you know what i'm saying like i got to have it and that's exactly what it was you know what i'm saying it was like the physical attraction between nina and darius it was like they really had to have each other you know what i'm saying like it was a physical thing and the fact that they were both artists that was cool but i felt like their connection wasn't all that deep because they weren't keeping it real with each other i felt like darius had his has a little bit of a guard up you know what i'm saying he didn't want to go out like a simp even though he went out like a simp and if y'all know what a simp is that's a soft dude a pushover you know what i'm saying but but he did go out like that even though he didn't try to he ended up going out like that and then nina on the other hand she just was a mind manipulative um woman she was very manipulative i'm saying like she came back from new york and she just wanted that man to be at her feet and it's like no honey bunny you ran off 
to New York to see what was popping with your ex-fiance. Like, you think Darius ain't gonna go and find somebody new? Like, you seen that man? I mean, I, his hairline was was not tip-top shape. He needed to shape up really bad. But other than that, he was a very attractive man. Like, he could have anybody he want. You thought he was just gonna be sitting there waiting for you? The nerve. Then this hussy had the nerve. Yeah, I'm getting on Nina. Cause she pissed me off. This is where I was like, oh my God. She went and started messing with his friend Hollywood. Knowing that that man was trifling and he was driving a hearse. You had the option between Darius and Hollywood when you when you first met them. You know what I'm saying? It's like, do I want the dude that spits poetry or the dude that's kind of corny and drives the hearse? You don't want no man that's driving no hearse. Like, come on now. You know you wouldn't normally go out with Hollywood, but you just did that to slight Darius because you was mad that he wasn't sitting there waiting on you while you figuring out if you want to be with the man that gets upset with you because you forget to buy another box of toasted oats. Come on now, sis. The world don't revolve around you. And you homeless. At least this man got some um, place to live. It may be in the hood. He might not get his mail because the mailman might be scared to come through. But at least it's his. You know what I'm saying? You in your house sitting for folks smoking in their house and everything. Trying to find out when your next gig gonna come. But anyway, I, I'm, just, I'm just rambling. I'm just rambling. She had the nerve to act like she's just shocked when Hollywood brings her, her up to the house party and she realized that Darius is there with all his friends and she's just like, no. See, she wasn't blindsided. There's no way that she thought that she was just gonna be messing with Hollywood and she was never gonna run into Darius and they friends, knowing that they close. Like, come on, honey bunny. You knew you was gonna see Darius and you wanted to make him jealous and everything. But the thing backfired because now you got the whole house looking at you. You got his friends and everything looking at you like a scallywag, cause you are a scallywag. You done been ran through by the crew. So which who the next one in the crew that's gonna run um through you? You gonna let Sheila hit too? I mean, I'm just I'm just saying. The guy with the hearse, you really started messing with his friend with the hearse. Come on now. Then she's like, take me home. I wanna go home. Da -da -da -da. He like walk. Yeah. I mean, what did she expect? What, what honestly did she expect? Because she sure did get with him because he was a gentleman. And you know, Darius, he, him being a gentleman and everything. And him actually have developed some feelings for her and stuff. He's trying to make sure she gets home safely. Did she go catch an attitude with him and stuff? And he's like, you stomping down the street like somebody done stole your bike. Like, what this man do to you for you to play him like that? And have him looking like a fool in front of the whole house, in front of his friends. You know they talk about him behind his back? Ain't no way. Ain't no way I would have been done with that tramp. I'm sorry. <laughs> I would have wrote some poetry about her for real. I would have been up there in that poetry slam. <laughs> like, these hoes ain't loyal. I would have been up there. I sure would have. <laughs> they smile in your face all the time. Want to take your place. That one would have went out to Hollywood calling him a backstabber. I sure would have. Would have wrote some poetry about both of them. <laughs> understand her beef with Darius. Why was she beating him down so bad? And then she talking about some, I saw you with that good girl at the bookstore. And he like, what girl? What you talking about? He, he had to think about it. He said, oh, that girl. Cause you know, he got so many. Like, I mean, he a handsome guy. Get with him. He like, oh, that floozy. She ain't mean nothing. She ain't mean nothing. You know? Then they end up getting back together and stuff. And she Talking about she can't trust him. And he's just looking like, what I do for you not to trust me? And that's, that's a thing that I hate that a lot of good people face is that sometimes you get with people and they done been through things and they pass, then they take it out on you. And that's not, that's not fair, you know. And I've been guilty of this too. But you know, everybody not the same. 
You gotta treat you gotta treat people accordingly, according to the way that they treat you. Darius never gave her no, never gave Nina no reason not to trust him. Now her, on the other hand, I would never trust her. Matter of fact, I would have did some get back. I would have smashed one of her friends. I sure would have. Not the chick that wanted to play by play and saying, oh, well, what did what did his D say to you and stuff like? No, nah, that girl, that girl crazy. But I would have found another one of her friends and I would have should boink 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 and they would ran to play back and told him what it was like <laughs> that's what he should have did I'm team Darius on this thing and then another thing another reason she was playing games I know she was playing games with this when she got her homegirl to call Darius and tell him that she had got a job with Vibe magazine and she was leaving and telling him like oh she's leaving tomorrow at noon she's leaving um, at Union Station just in case you want to stop her you can't tell me that Nina did not tell her homegirl to call Darius and tell and give him the, the details of her leaving town come on now I mean I done did some stuff like that too back in the day I was like homegirl call my man and tell him da -da 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 so he can call he can check on me yeah we, we done been there she toxic she toxic and he's sitting there like he don't care whatever letting time tick on by and stuff is getting to be almost 12 then he going through traffic bobbing and weaving in a motorcycle no you know what you're not riding in a car man you in a motorcycle if somebody hit you it's over for you you know what i'm saying you had all day you knew beforehand that the train was leaving at 12 o'clock and you knew you wanted to stop her from getting on that train you could have made it there in time to where you ain't had to be bobbing and weaving through traffic then he ran through union station pushing people on the escalator and i got pissed off at that part <laughs> I got ticked off because I done had an accident on the escalator before and I was on crutches for months so he could have seriously injured somebody and then <laughs> me and Darius would have been fighting in the Union Station. I don't care if you're trying to stop this chick from going on the train or not. You ain't pushing me on no escalator. <laughs> then he get there and the train just go by and he done missed her. He done did all that. Put all those lives in danger. It didn't didn't even wasn't even able to stop her from getting on the train. She just went on by her merry way. And then the thing says one year later. I sat there, I said, one year later, hold up this story gonna skip to a year later. So you mean to tell me they want no phone calls, want no letters sent. Y'all just cease communication with each other and y'all knew y'all still had feelings for each other. That's the definition of stubborn right there. A year he tell, he tells his homeboy like yeah I wrote some letters to her but I just never sent them off. What's romantic about that? This thing is stubborn. Romance is when you are selfless. You know you just put your heart on the line. You like I don't care if this make me look silly. If this make me look soft, I'm gonna express my emotion. I'm gonna let you know how I feel about you, baby. I don't care. I I just need you. Y'all let a whole year pass. Y'all know how much people can change in a year? Oh, I was just flabbergasted. Then Nina, she gets the opportunity to go back to Chicago for a little while or whatever. And she's taking it as an opportunity, you know, try to get Darius back. But she didn't go the traditional route. She know Darius' address. I'm pretty sure she know his um, phone number. No, she decides to go to his poetry spot to make this big act of love in front of everybody and spit this big poem to him that she done wrote. The, through the whole movie, we ain't never heard nothing about her writing no real poetry, but all of a sudden now she a poet. <laughs> she gets up there reading this poetry about seeing sounds and the meaning of love. <laughs> I'm just like, what the hell is that? <laughs> She's sitting there, she don't see him in the in the little poetry area, but he there, so he here or whatever. So she says it or whatever and afterwards everybody get her hand clap and stuff. She look and she don't see him. So she's like, dang, I done wrote this poem for no reason. He ain't even there. Then she throws a poetry book in the trash can. You didn't even mean it. You didn't even mean that poem. You just said what you had to say so he could be like, damn, Lena, that's how you feel. You love me. Huh? Like, no, if that poem really meant something to you, you would have kept that thing. But no, she was just putting on another act of manipulation. You know what I'm saying? 
like that after she walk out and she see him with the motorbike and whatever and he calls her over and so she all went and I said yeah that's what she get I'm glad she had to go outside in the rain I'm glad it was hard that day rain that all up on her head I was so glad and then they talking and stuff and about how they feel about each other she's like well how are we gonna make this work and da, da, da. you always want things to happen when you want it to like it's so urgent and you know the timing is off or whatever he's like that's a woman like i love you and it's urgent like a mother effort it's just like oh and i was like oh you know but yeah but honestly <laughs> I just feel like that was like the most toxic love story I've ever seen. Oh my God. You know, we always clowning, clowning the Titanic and stuff and how, oh girl, she could have let the dude up on the raft or whatever, he had to die. But is this story was toxic as hell. Love, love Jones was, ex, was extra toxic. I said, oh no, I don't want to see this no more. Like, out of five stars, I give it two. <laughs> And in the poetry, maybe I just ain't deep enough snap snap, alright? Cause I just was like, mm-mm. No, no sir, no ma'am, no ham, no turkey. I didn't like it. I did not like it. Oh Lord. Y'all gotta let me know y'all thoughts down in the um comment section. Then I see some people like online, they they use their handles or like Nina Mosley and stuff like that. What y'all what y'all identify with the character that y'all wanna make that y'all username for? Alright, y'all y'all are freaking the sheets. That's what y'all <laughs> try to let people know. I mean, y'all wanna get y'all cameras out and start snapping and have people take your clothes off. You know? <laughs> I just I am just saying, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, so I hope that you all enjoyed this video. If so, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel if you're not already so you can see some more videos. And until next time, I'll see you later on. Bye.